Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Peter Momagos from Beyond the Enemy Gates Ministries and Belito Christian Center. Let me know if you're joining me tonight. Let me know where you're coming from. Share the stream if you will. We're going to share uh, the fourth step to biblical healing. Hanelius, welcome. Good to see you. Um, tonight we've shared one, two and three and then we also shared uh, on miracles in the beginning. Hi Twiki, welcome. Uh, the fourth step to receive biblical healing is to understand that physical healing is a part of salvation. Uh, so we'll share that tonight. Hi Janitha, welcome. Good to see you. Um, just got to make an adjustment here. Uh, Hi uh, Shanae, welcome, good to see you from the States. I'm just going to chat a little bit while we come on and then we'll go through the first three steps. Um, you know, it came to me today that um, we, and I posted it just now, we, in order to hit the mark, we're going to have to make continual adjustments in our race and in our lives uh, as we go. Um, and hi uh, Susan, welcome, good to see you. Hi uh, Renel, good to see you. Um, and... Um, you know, one of the biggest challenges that we will ever face is our confession uh, over our lives, over our children's lives, over our circumstances, um, is that we need to get in sync with God's word. Hi, Helen. Welcome. Good to see you. And that's why we'll go through and we'll share at the end, I will share it with you, um, the uh, declarations, because we need to declare life to our situations and we can easily uh, declare a death even unintention unintentionally you know when someone comes against you uh, even if it's um, kind of uh, jokingly uh, you'll pick up um, that those words are negative and you need to bind them break their power cast them out in Jesus name hi Brenda good to see you the thing is is that we need to be continually aware of what is being spoken in and over our lives. And that's a key in hitting the mark, is to make sure that God's word is preeminent in your life. And, you know, we can have fun. It's, it, God, I'm sure when God looks at us, every day he laughs, okay? Um, and it's good to have fun. I enjoy having fun. Um, but um, it's got to be in the right direction, the right tone and the right wording. That comes out um, and that will uh, cause you to actually hit the mark uh, if I can say it this way uh, clearer there will be less resistance um, and that's what we got to focus on um, is hitting the mark you know uh, when God begins to speak to you hi June welcome good to see you when God speaks to you about vision you know you what you need to begin to do is uh, you're going to go through if you're faithful and obedient in pursuing it you're going to go through a season of uh, how can I put it a cave experience it's the cave of Adullam where David went into he fled into the cave of Adullam and he stayed there okay and we all go through a cave and it's actually to equip you to anoint you to bless you and key to strengthen you because whatever he's called you to do is going to require uh, a little bit of um, the ability to stand as you go because much resistance will come because once the devil recognizes that you recognize what God God has called you for he's going to do everything to slow you down shipwreck your faith and cause you to miss the mark and it will come through people, it will come through circumstances, it will come through family, uh, but you've just got to resist it. Hi, Shomain, welcome. Hi, Monique. I think I might have missed someone. Hi, Colleen, good to see you. The thing is, is that we need to begin to understand that, uh, you know, the word tells us to lay aside every weight, not some weights, every weight that slows you down and prevents you from hitting the mark. And sometimes it's family. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't know if I put the post up, but I was tempted to. But I thought, let me just uh, um, keep my mouth and keep my tongue. Ah, Bonnie, welcome. Is that what happens? You know, demons can hide. 
and especially in families, they hide. So unless you definitely know, unless you definitely discern and you definitely have an encounter with a demonic in your family, you kind of know that there's something that's not right. But as you begin to be equipped, as you begin to have a greater measure of the anointing on your life, those demons, uh, they can't handle the heat. Okay. And they become more and more uh, aggressive if I can put it that way. And sometimes they'll even be exposed. So what do you do when the demons start to, to jump in your family? You've got to make a decision on what you've got to do. Now, I can't tell you what to do. Um, it just depends what type of demon, okay? And it depends what type of attack and also what type of a relationship. But there might come a time where you need to cut off family, even immediate family. It's It happens. Um, and it's not the greatest thing that will happen to you because uh, you kind of try and analyze the situation. Uh, but if you look at it spiritually, it's a must. It's a must. So you need to uh, use wisdom. And you know, there, there's what's known as, and I've shared it before, the seven flames of the one Holy Spirit, which is Isaiah 11 verse 2. And one of them is the spirit of wisdom. And I pray that at least two or three times a week. Uh, I pray, Lord, please give me a greater measure of the spirit of wisdom because we're moving and we're moving forward. And there's a buffering coming all the time from the enemy. Okay. And, you know, I've mentioned it before. Uh, I don't know why I'm sharing this with you while we start. I've been attacked many times by Jezebel. And we're kind of teaching on Jezebel. Not kind of, we are. Okay. We... Um, coming uh, face to face with that demon on a regular basis and the enemy sends them in okay now we don't know exactly every time whether they uh, Jezebel or not because you can't label everyone uh, just because they say something different but it will come over a period of time and I put up 11 symptoms you know the the, the easiest symptom to pick up that a person is Jezebel is when you've conversed with them in any way, be it email, be it uh, um, text, be it WhatsApp, be it uh, on social media, be it a telephone call, be it a discussion, be it a coffee. One of the, the key things that happens to you is when you leave that session, uh, you feel fatigued. But it's such a... Uh, uh, a fatigue that you feel you need to go lie down and sleep. That's one of the key areas. So anyway, let's uh, get into tonight. I'm not going to uh, do a long session tonight because uh, it's not a long session, but um, it's to bring understanding. And you know, there are many people that should be on you. I know them, but they're not on you. Okay. I'll be speaking to a couple of them shortly. Um, and the thing is, is that you need to appropriate your health by faith. I can't do it for you, but you need to go to the word. We need to take you to the word and we need to equip you so that you get the understanding. You know, the saddest thing for me is when I see people that are sick, okay, and they're not making an effort uh, to position themselves to get well, okay? And I'm not talking about any specific person at the moment, so don't get bent out of shape uh, if you come on and... Uh, Maybe you're not doing what's required. It's a general statement because I see people all the time that are not well, but they're not making the effort to get better. You know, God is waiting for you. Uh, he's waiting for us every single morning. You know, if we have a regular appointment with him, it's five o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning. He's waiting for you. He's, 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 he's actually pleased that he has a meeting with you. Okay. And he's probably disappointed when you don't pitch up. And that happens from time to time. And I just wanted to say before we start, for those that come on, that uh, would either be watching now, live tonight, or by restream, is that we take communion, and it's in the book, uh, Seven Steps to Biblical Healing. We take communion for restoration to our physical health in our bodies, healing by the Holy Communion. So let's pray tonight before we start. So Father, we come, we enter your presence once again tonight through the blood. We say good evening, Lord. Good evening, Jesus. Good evening, Holy Spirit.
And Father, we come today and we repent of our sin of the day, sin of omission, sin of commission, sin of negative word, negative thought, negative deed. And we thank you that it is removed as far as the east is from the west. Father, we come and we thank you that you would open our spiritual eyes, that you would open our spiritual ears, that we would have a greater measure of insight, foresight, revelation and inspiration, particularly on the word that is going to be shared tonight. We take authority over every mind-binding spirit and every uh, mind-blinding spirit, every spirit of religion. We bind it in Jesus' name. We break its power in the spirit and by the spirit in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen and Amen. Let's just recap quickly the first uh, three steps. The first step was to understand that the age for miracles had not passed and that physical healing is still a part of Christ's ministry today. The second step is to know that God's promises uh, are in to heal are in his word and to be convinced that they are for us personally, not just for some people, for everyone, every single one of us that are born again. The third step is to understand that God wants us to be well and that only Satan wants us to suffer. You know, he came to kill, steal and destroy. And that's how all death comes in. It's through the enemy. It's not through God. He brings life and life more abundantly. That's why uh, he provided uh, Jesus as the supreme sacrifice for us so that he would take our sins upon himself. Okay, so that there would be an atonement for our sins. And we're on our way to heaven. I mean, imagine that. Imagine the depth of that grace and mercy. Okay, so let's start. Um, the fourth step to receiving biblical healing is to understand that physical healing is a part of salvation. We cannot separate Jesus the healer from Jesus the savior. So we cannot separate biblical healing from biblical salvation. God's order for blessing our lives is that he forgives all our iniquities and then he uh, heals all our diseases. Psalm 103 verse 3. Forgiveness of our sins comes first, then healing of our diseases. That follows. God's condition for his healing covenant is that you shall serve the Lord your God. And then he adds, and I will take sickness, sickness away from the midst of you. Exodus 23 25. Healing comes from the healer. He heals from within. That's why it's important that we imbibe the word. When we receive him, we receive his healing to our physical bodies because health is part of his abundant life. John 10.10. 10. If you desire physical healing, but you have never received Jesus into your life, now is the time to be saved. Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2. The miracle of the new birth. The Bible says all have sinned, not some, all, and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3 verse 23. And accept you repent, you shall likewise perish. Luke 13 verse 5. It says your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, and he will not hear. Isaiah 59 verse 2. That's if you're not born again. It also says that Christ's blood was shed for many for the remission of sins, and that you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1 verse 21. If we confess our sin to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John uh, 1 verse 9. Jesus said, you must be born again. John 3 verse 7. And Paul said, the Apostle Paul, if anyone in, is in Christ or be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. Jesus enters our lives and we are made new because he comes to live in us. He is a person, not a philosophy, a reality, not a religion. 
You shall be saved. You may ask, so how can I know that I'm saved? How can I be sure that my sins are forgiven? This is what the Bible says. The Philippian jailer asked, what must I do to be saved? Paul and Silas said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Acts 16, 30 and 31. Jesus said, those who believe the gospel and are baptized shall be saved. Mark 16, 16. The apostle Paul said, if you shall confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and shall believe in your heart that Jesus raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Romans 10 verse 9. Peter said, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 2 21. Every one of these scriptures contains the promise shall be saved. When people do what these scriptures say, they can know that they have received Christ and they have passed from death to life, John 5, 24, and that they are born again, John 3, verse 7, 1 Peter 1, 23, and 1 John 5, verse 4. The secret of identity with Christ. When we receive Jesus and commit our lives to him, we are restored to God's life. When we identify what he did for us, and when we believe that he assumed the judgment for our sins, our place, in our place, this is what happens. The righteousness of Christ is transferred from our account and we are free of all guilt and judgment. Jesus Christ comes and lives the life of God in and through us. That's why when we say the kingdom is not over there and it's not over there, it's within us. Okay. We are restored to God according to his original plan. We become a new creation. A supernatural power is given to us that makes us children of God. It's a miracle. God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be made sin on our behalf, so that in him we might share the righteousness or life of God. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. Faith to receive the healer. According to the Bible, the thing that we call faith is the most important of all. It means only believe. Mark 5.36, what Jesus said. To be saved is to receive the life of Christ. One must know the promises of God for salvation and put complete trust in what Jesus accomplished for every human being through his sacrificial death on the cross, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension back to the Father. By faith, the gospel is the power of God to salvation to everyone that believes. Romans 1 verse 16. By grace, unmerited favor, are we saved through faith and not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Ephesians 2 verse 8, uh, 8 and 9. For they that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. What faith means? Faith is believing. I've gone too fast or too far. Is believing what God says is true. Faith means that we expect God to do what he promised. That is why faith comes by hearing the word of God. We must know what God promised to do before we can expect him to do it. Faith is accepting God's promises and being so convinced that they are true that we act upon them, even when the circumstances seem contrary. Trust in Christ. We trust in Jesus Christ. We trust that he did enough on the cross. We trust his sacrifice. We trust that he paid our debt and we trust that he suffered enough for us. So that's the teaching tonight. If you've joined us by stream or by restream, you watch or you'll watch in the future. There's a salvation prayer that I'm going to go through that you can repeat after me. It's very simple. We've all done it. Um, that's the simple um, act that you do to re receive salvation. You know, the, the shortest um, salvation prayer was the thief on the cross that turned to Jesus and said, remember me. 
That's all he said. Remember me. And Jesus said to him, today you'll be with me in paradise. So repeat this after me. Father, I come before you in Jesus' name and I recognize that I can't save myself. I believe that Jesus was crucified, that he died and that he was raised from the dead on the third day and that he lives forevermore. I thank you that he removes my sin as far as the east is from the west. And I declare that he is the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen and Amen. I trust that you got some understanding there tonight. Let's do the declarations before uh, we take uh, communion. Um, okay, I've already highlighted them. I will share them. i just got to get to a point where uh, I edit them a little bit more. And then also, uh, I need to put them in a, in a better order. I'm only going to do a couple tonight. And then I'm going to take you back to the original one, the, the longer one, which I believe is so impactful that we need to actually take these healing prayers and apply them to our lives every single day. I know that... Uh, some of us don't have the time, but you know, if you're busy during your day, you have a break, you have tea, uh, you uh, waiting in a queue, you waiting for transport, whatever. You've got time. You've got time. You know, uh, I worked it out. Every every delay that comes my way, uh, I try. I don't say I've done it every time, but I'll find a little gap. I'll go somewhere and I'll pray because the delays sometimes come through the enemy. So you need to pay him back in that delay and cause him to, uh, when we pray in the spirit, it's known as the judicial punishment of the breath. So we punish him when we pray in the spirit. So if I'm in a queue, I just remove myself. Maybe I'm uh, three yards or three meters away from the people. I'll go and stand there and then I'll pray. I'll just stand there and pray in the spirit. Um, and I don't necessarily have to pray for a subject, although it's beneficial for for you and the person that you're praying for. And that that time that we deem wasted is never wasted because that's prayer or prayer in the spirit that uh, for uh, edification. Edification, building you up in the spirit man or your spirit man. So let's do the confessions tonight. Let's declare. Father, I declare that my bones are fat because I received the good report of the gospel in Jesus' name. I declare, Lord, keep all my bones. Psalm 34, verse 20. I declare that every tumor or evil growth melt at the presence of God. I declare, let any infection in my body be burned by the fire of God. I release myself from all allergies and sinus problems in the name of Jesus. I declare that I pray for my arteries and blood vessels to be opened and my circulatory system to function properly in Jesus' mighty name. I declare I rebuke all fevers in the name of Jesus. I declare that my flesh shall be fresher than a child's and I will return to the days of my youth. That's Job 33, 25. And I declare that I pray for my immune system to be strengthened in the name of Jesus. And I declare that, Lord, you would renew my youth like the eagles. Psalm 103, verse 5. So let's go back to the top. And get the the one that we shared. I think we've shared it twice already. Okay. Repeat this with me. I declare that I cast out all spirits of infirmity that would attack my body in the name of Jesus. I break, rebuke, and cast out any spirit of cancer that would attempt to establish itself in my lungs, my bones, my breasts, my throat, my back, my spine, my liver, kidneys, pancreas, skin, or stomach, in Jesus' name. I rebuke and cast out all spirits causing diabetes, high blood pressure, 
low blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, kidney failure, leukemia, blood disease, breathing problems, arthritis, lupus, Alzheimer's, or insomnia in the name of Jesus. I speak healing and strength to my bones, my muscles, my joints, my organs, my head, my eyes, my throat, my glands, my blood, marrow, lungs, kidneys, liver, spleen, spine, pancreas, eyes, bladder, ears, nose, sinuses, mouth, tongue, and teeth. I add teeth, teeth in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for healing in our physical bodies. We thank you, Father, that your hand moves over our lives tonight. Even as we partake of the communion, uh, we come, we bless the elements tonight, we bless the bread, we bless the blood, and we thank you, Father, that as we partake of the bread tonight, that every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, every spirit of infirmity that's working a work of death, that's working a work of Satan, in and against and over our lives tonight is totally consumed as we partake of the bread tonight in Jesus' name. Name your condition, the bread. The blood, Father, we come and we partake of the blood once again tonight with the understanding that it opens our spiritual eyes that we we begin to see, begin to hear that we have a greater measure of insight, foresight, revelation and inspiration, particularly to that which pertains to the secrets and the mysteries of God. Those things that are still to be revealed to us. And the greatest mystery that we would ever know is your plan for our individual lives. We thank you for it in Jesus mighty name. And Father, we come, we partake of the blood with the understanding that it elicits help from above, that every situation that we find ourselves in tonight, whether it be physically, emotionally, spiritually, even financially, that we would certainly elicit help from above and we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we come, we partake of the blood with the understanding that it wards off every sickness, every disease and every virus that's floating around in the atmosphere. And we pray a hedge of protection over and around our bodies tonight, including our families, including our loved ones, including our children, including our grandchildren tonight. In Jesus' name, the blood. And all God's children said, Amen and Amen. Thank you for joining me tonight. Share the stream if you will. Um, Take, I'm leaving these uh, teachings up. They stay up for 30 days and then they get deleted automatically. But by that time, I would have transferred them up to YouTube uh, and I will uh, remove the ones on YouTube that are already there and I will add these so that when we begin to talk to people, we say, okay, go to the, go to the YouTube channel and start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and work through it word by word. So bless you. Have a peaceful night's sleep. I'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.